Welcome to another episode of the Introduction to Speech Processing video series. In this video I'm going to talk about the Griffin Lim algorithm. It's a algorithm for recovering phase spectrograms uh, when you have access to only the magnitude spectrum or a noisy magnitude spectrum, so where the no uh, phase part is noisy. This is a problem which occurs relatively frequently, especially now in speech enhancement and noise attenuation situations, where it is easier to recover the magnitude part and the phase part is usually left unenhanced. Un so it's, it's very, the, where the magnitude spectrum is, is uh, cleaned from noise, uh, phase spectrum is, is more difficult to clean, so it's more noisy. And then we would like to recover the phase spectrum somehow. It doesn't make a real difference whether we have magnitude spectrum, power spectrum or log power spectrum, because uh, we always convert the power spectra, log power spectra back to magnitude spectra, and, and that doesn't change the situation in any way. But if you look at this problem in isolation, if you just have a single complex valued signal, x is equal to real part plus the imaginary part, and if we have only access to the magnitude of that, so the absolute value, uh, then this is impossible. We have two unknowns, A and B, but only one equation. Uh, but no, do, do not despair. Uh, there is a situation, so if, if you have lots of values for x, or parallel values, uh, which are correlated, then we can reconstruct the complex value. And the key element what Griffin Lin uses as its source for correlation is leakage. So you should remember that in time frequency representations uh, neighboring bins are correlated. Now especially uh, if when you take one window or signal and the next one comes overlap here then the in they share the same input signal. So the same information appears here in this window and also in this window. So that means that the, that the two windows will be correlated and that helps us in recovering the phase component. The same happens only also over frequencies because we use finite length windows which will always cause smearing across frequencies. So one frequency bin is all, all, so there's always leaking information from one frequency bin, especially to its neighbors, but also to basically all other frequency bins. Uh, so both over time and frequency there is leakage, and that's what Griffin Lim uses to recover the uh, phase part of the spectrum. Uh, it happens rather hiddenly, uh, the, it's not immediately obvious why this happens, uh, but the argument is also not com complicated, so it's rather straightforward to see. Uh, so let's start look at the near example. Um, so we have here the uh, original signal is just a sinusoid, and then I take the STFT of that, and that, uh, so that goes into the original spectrum, and then we take the absolute value of that, so that's, that will be the magnitude spectrum, and then that magnitude spectrum will be multiplied by a complex exponential, when I just have random values inside. So the uh, spectrum where I start from, the noisy spectrum, has the accurate magnitude spectrum, but a random phase. So then the, then the actual, or the main, Algorithm is this part here. It's an iteration, so a for loop. Approximately 30 rounds is usually quite sufficient. And we, we, first we have an inverse STFT and then a 
forward is the FT. And those two alternate uh, in between here. So the, this real value here is just because the psi by inverse STFT leaks some complex valued or uh, imaginary valued components as well. So I just remove them. Uh, and then here, so we take the, uh, so the, at the output of the STFT, we take the spectrogram, the angle of that becomes the complex phase and then we multiply with the magnitude which we wanted to have. So the magnitude spectrum is always accurate after each iteration and it's all only the complex part which is updated. And now you remember that there was leakage between time frequency components. So by doing this back and forth with the STFT, we force leakage between time frequency components. And, and then that means that it will slowly, slowly travel to a point where, where the kind of um, um, it balances out the leakage. Um, and yes, so then we can look at the, how it looks the pictures. So this is just plotting this part. It plots every fifth, every fifth uh, uh, iteration. We start with a noisy time signal. Uh, the blue one is the sinusoid which we wanted to have. And now when you take the random phase here, it's quite nicely aligned with the original signal. But then sometimes the uh, neighboring windows cancel each, uh, each other out. So here's an almost zero here because the two windows are opposite phase. You can see that the, these ones are aligned with the blue curve and these are exactly between those blue, blue curves. So the, then, then when you sum them together, they will uh, more or less cancel, cancel the, uh, each other out. And that's why we have zero here. And then sometimes uh, the neighboring frames will um, add to each other. So we have sometimes these peaks here as well. But then when we run this iteration for a few times, it starts to become more and more flat. So here we have this uh, amplitude is almost already uh, converging to the original amplitude. Uh, here actually we see that the, the face of the signal, so the, the red lines are just between the blue lines. It means that the, the face is actually opposite face. Whereas here they align perfectly. Which means that the, uh, here we have really managed to get the full recovery of the phase. Uh, but the big variations in amplitude are gone. There's only some places here is a big, big dip and here is a bit of a larger peak in amplitude. Uh, now in this particular example, uh, there's not much change after the fifth iteration. But sometimes, so if you run this several times, you'll see that Sometimes it, it kind of becomes more or less perfect and sometimes it's a bit problematic like, uh, like in this case. I have here also different frequencies as an example. So here the input to the sinusoid is much slower. It's a kind of slower, uh, slower sinusoid. And then with random phase we really get a noise signal uh, more or less. Um, and then when you run, run the iterations, uh, you get here, it, here is a more or less sinusoidal signal, uh, which has the right frequency, but opposite phase. And here at the end, we have the uh, right phase, but the reconstruction is not very accurate. So these kinds of things do happen. So it, it clearly in this area, it has landed in a local minimum or local optimum. Uh, but it's unable to find a global minimum. Uh, if you look at, we could have looked at here also the spectrum. So we see that the, uh, at the start, it does have a peak here. I mean, it's supposed to have a peak here and it does have a peak here, but it's rather rounded. And when we iterate more, it gets more peaky here. So better basically in this area. And also here, it starts with a rounded peak here at the 
uh, target frequency, it gets better with iterations, but it's never really perfect. Anyway, this, this kind of pictures tell only part of the story. Of course, we want to have uh, the real sound as well. And here I've pre-recorded a wave file. Um, and, and I do the same thing, STFT to get the spectrogram, and then I keep the magnitude part and then replace the phase part with random values. And here's the inverse STFT, forward STFT iterated and with just the magnitude always reconstructed. And finally, you need to do the inverse STFT to get to a waveform, and then we can finally play that. So now here is first the original file. So clean. This is a demonstration of the Griffin Lim algorithm. And the reconstructed part. This is a demonstration of the Griffin Lim algorithm. Now, in this video, uh, the audio will be encoded with the video encoder. Uh, so, you will not hear it as clearly as, as you can do uh, as, as, as it is in real life. So, I, I propose that you would go to listen to that sound sample on the web page of this book. It, it, is, it is audible. At least to my ears, it's clearly audible. But of course, that can be a matter of experience that you learn to hear the differences. Um, but uh, it, the distortion is not bad. It's I mean, it's uh, it can but once you learn to hear it, it's a bit annoying. Um, but certainly, that's a usable quality level. Of course, admi admittedly, this is a difficult case for the Griffin limb because we removed the face entirely. So in more typical cases uh, we have a noisy face to work with and, and then it's much easier to reconstruct uh, the spectrum because the, then you are already rather close to the global minimum and not as easily diverted to local minima. Yes, and the name Griffin Lim for the algorithm comes from the original authors, Daniel Griffin and Jai Lim, uh, their paper, paper from the 80s. Uh, now this original algorithm is a simple version and what people usually use is a fast Griffin Lim. It's, it's, not, it's, I mean, it's also rather simple, so actually the algorithm above is more or less the fast version of it. Anyway, this is what I had to uh, tell about the Griffin Lim algorithm. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that we see you again sometime soon.